Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and let's do some camera tracking in After Effects. Then we can take all that stuff and send it over to Moto with the free After Effects I.O. kit from the Foundry, and maybe set up little dynamic simulations and some render passes, and then bring all that stuff back into After Effects for a composition. And this composition right here, let me play it. This is just me walking around. Whoops, go ahead and play. This is just me walking around a desk that nobody uses, but my kids to play Minecraft. Um, with my iPhone, a handheld shaky cam, and After Effects does a good job. You can see that cheesy text there is stuck to that notepad pretty well. I mean, it really is. It's really, uh, it sells it, and um, it's not perfect, but it's very close. That pencil is just a dynamic simulation in Moto. And yeah, that's it. The pencil, let me just back up, was rendered in layers. You may not be able to tell. I rendered it kind of low res. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of a reflection there. It's kind of hard to tell, but we'll take a look at the composition later. Um, but we're able to get an animated camera out of After Effects as well as stand-in geometry for the table and uh, some null points in there to help us uh, tell where the tracking is. And then this sort of cheesy animation there is just After Effects text animation. But you can kind of see that it really does a good job tracking. So camera tracking in After Effects is for real, the black art of camera tracking. And uh, we can get that into Moto now. So let's take a look at how we do it. So here we are in After Effects. Here's my footage I shot with my sweet iPhone 5. Yes, I'm still using an iPhone 5. And you'll notice there's no tracking points in the scene. I didn't put any little stickers down, any little markers or little dots that I would you know, erase later. It's just pure footage. But I knew that After Effects would pick, on, pick up on some of these high contrast areas. So I very deliberately put this notepad here and I figured they would pick up on the keyboard in a few of these places of high contrast some of these nice planar areas, right? So that always helps the tracker when you have different uh, planes and sort of a parallax motion as well. And, you know, if you're not going to put down marking points specifically, you know, try to have some sort of planar shapes with high contrast. So the After Effects tracker has something to pick up on. To start the tracker, you literally just have to right click on the footage and select track camera. Uh, that's all there is to it. It's going to start analyzing it in the background so you can continue working if you want to but I'm actually just gonna control Z out of this so we don't have to watch it and go over here to this comp where it's already been tracked. So this footage has already been tracked. It's already gone through the automatic tracking process. And if, if you select the footage and press E, you'll notice that it's got a camera tracker effect there. If I select that, you'll see all these points appear, right? So those are all the automatic tracking points that After Effects um, laid down when it tracked the footage. And if I drag through here, You'll notice that some points sort of appear and disappear throughout the course of the shot. And sometimes the shot goes off frame and points disappear. What I'm looking for is a good part of the shot where I can see a nice um, triangle, sort of a three-point plane that I can select as my origin. So if I start hovering over this stuff in here, select my camera tracker and start hovering, you'll see that this target starts appearing, right? And if you look closely, you may not be able to see it, but there's actually a little white triangle being drawn between these three points, and it's using that as a plane. So that's a nice flat plane there. In fact, that's perfect. That's where I'm gonna. That's the one I'm gonna use. But if I say hover over the keyboard, you'll notice it's at a slight angle, which is which is right. I mean, the keyboard is at a slight angle once it finds the right three points there. Um, but what After Effects will do is it'll keep on trying to find three points where it makes a nice little planar triangle. Okay. So I'm gonna pick this one. And once I, I'm here, there are these three points right here. I can also sort of select them manually. If I click and hold shift and click and hold shift and click, then it's going to um, make the plane out of the ones that I've clicked there. And now this looks good to me. So the desk is flat, the circle is flat. I know these three points here are flat. This little triangle is flat. So I'm gonna right click and say, set ground plane and origin. And then I'm gonna right click again and say, create three nulls and camera. And so now I've got three nulls, track null one, two, three, and my camera, okay? Now I can create more nulls if I want. So let's say if I want some of these from the keyboard here, I can grab these three, and maybe that helps me um, later on in Moto know where the keyboard is. I don't have to set the ground plane again or anything like that. I could just right click and say, uh, create four nulls. Maybe I have four of those guys checked there. So create four nulls, I've got some more tracking nulls here. I may actually just um, grab these three and just call it, uh, we'll just name it something like um, home plane, home null 
one and control C. You know, you can't in name multiple layers at once in After Effects, which is kind of crazy. I can't select these and right click and say rename. It's actually ghosted out. Since when can you not rename multiple things in After Effects? I guess I did not know that. Um, there's a feature request for After Effects, home null three, good enough. And the other ones are fine, but it just gives me a sense when I get back to Moto that these nulls are gonna have a name. Now, I'm also going to create um, a layer in here. I'm gonna start with text actually, just so I can get a feeling if the track is on or not. So I'm just gonna right click and, well, actually I'll go up here to my text tool and click here and say, hello. And then let me just move that up to the top maybe. Make that 3D and you'll notice it disappeared. So remember, these three points here, I made the ground point and the origin. So if I go to my position here on the hello text and say zero, 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 it drops into that uh, first null there. That's that's my origin, right? That's my zero, zero, zero of my universe. And I'm going to actually rotate my hello. Now on rotation here, you've got an After Effects is almost like you have six rotation channels. They've divided up orientation and rotation. Don't mess with orientation if you want this um, to go to Modo. So the text null isn't actually, or the text layer isn't actually going to go to Modo anyway, so I can use these, but um, just later on, if you're using, say, a solid, you just wanna use the rotation channels, not the orientation channels, if you want that to be in Modo later on. So let me zoom in here a little bit. Maybe uh, turn this a little, like so, it looks pretty good, and just uh, use my little arrows here. Okay, so push back out, maybe uh, bump up the font size a little bit. And let's just drag through and see how well this sticks. So fit up to 100%. I just wanna see how good my track is. And it's pretty good. I mean, that, that sticks. It's sticking. Good job, After Effects. All right, so I'm happy with this, so I wanna get it to Moto now. Actually, not quite yet. Let me do one more thing. See this table here? One thing the uh, After Effects IO plugin will do, it'll bring over cameras, I think it'll bring over lights, and it will bring over nulls, but it will also bring over a simple plane, a solid in After Effects as a rectangular geometry, basically a polygon in Moto. So I can do a right click and say new solid, new solid, I know that's off the screen there, I'm just saying new solid, and we'll call it table, and we'll make it blue, and we'll say okay. And that's full screen, so let's go 3D. Now it's 3D, maybe hit T for transparency, make it a little transparent. So again, let's press P and positioning, let's go to zero, zero, zero. Now it's at our origin. And uh, let's rotate it, right? So not orientation, just rotation. So I think this was maybe uh, 270 for flat and then maybe uh, rotate this around. So it's looking good, okay. So the scale isn't right. So um, it's not quite perfect there, but it's pretty good. Let me just sort of finagle this. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be close. So if you want to scale it, you can. So I can I can scale this up, but for whatever reason, the scale channels don't come over into Moto. So if I scale this up and move it around, it's not going to be um, in the right place when it comes into Moto. I'll just have to change the scale from 100 to 175 in Moto. So I can actually do this. Let's see, that's about right. Not perfect, but it's okay. It's hanging over there a little bit to maybe uh, rotate just a tad. Okay, so there's my tabletop. Looks pretty good, not perfect. We're coming off a little bit here, so we may wanna just tweak a tad, but it's, it's pretty close. It's good enough. Put it that way. Okay, so we've got our table. We've got our tracking points. We've got our 3D camera right here. And if you press a U to show animated channels, you'll see the orientation and position channels there on the camera. So now we just need to get this to Moto. So if you look at your account in uh, on the Foundry website, you'll notice that right at the top in alphabetical order, the Moto After Effects IO kit. So Download this guy, download the content, and you'll get some tutorials, and you'll get some uh, documentation on how to install it. I am not going to go through that because it's going to take too long, probably like two minutes, but that's too long, right? We don't want to watch that, so James Darknell did the documentation. He does a great job, and you can get it installed correctly. 
back in After Effects, we're going to export this to Moto. So under Scripts, File, and again, I see this is going off screen. That's okay. Oh, no, it's back on screen. So we're going to pick the uh, After Effects Moto I.O. script. Click that. We're going to go over to Export to Moto, and it's automatically going to grab everything in the scene that's exportable. So the nulls, uh, the three home nulls I made, plus the extra nulls around the keyboard I grabbed, um, the 3D camera, and the table uh, solid layer, which is going to come in as a polygon, are all exportable, and they're automatically there. And the composition camera track, too, that's what we're doing. So let's pick a file. I'm just going to go to my desktop and say camera track 2. Save. And then export. And it's that fast. It's super fast. And then we just have to go over to Moto. Okay, here I am in Moto. I'm going to go up to my After Effects I.O. button on the uh, Moto Modes bar here. Import from After Effects. Camera Track 2 JSON. Sounds good to me. Hit OK. Whoops. And then we've got this little requester that comes up. So there's a file name. Then we have Film Size and Scene Scale. Film Size 36 and Scene Scale 100. So I'm going to leave these at default. I'm especially not going to mess with the scene scale. I think that's a surefire way to probably screw everything up. The film size corresponds to the film size in After Effects. If I go to After Effects and I double click on the camera, you will see film size 36. Also remember my table here, I had scaled it to 175% in all three axes um, to sort of match it up with this table. But if I go over to Modo, hit OK, bring that in. If I go to Moto and I look at my scene here, I've got, let me just go ahead and control one, toggle cameras to show my cameras. And I'm gonna kill the default camera, the default mesh and that default light because I hate them. Go away, bye bye. Bring that camera to the top there because that's how I like to roll. And you know what, let's make the camera a little bigger. So display, size, um, and item mode, you press C for channel hole, right? Make that bigger. Okay, there's my camera. Um, these three nulls here are my home null, and you'll notice that the table is not big enough. These are the ones sort of around the uh, notepad, the notepads on the desk. And of course, that's because the scale channel does not come over in from After Effects to Moto. Don't know why, probably an oversight, but we just can just bump that up to 175. Control Alt Return to get all three uh, channels there going at once. And now it's matched up. So if I look through my camera here, looks pretty good. I've got uh, my home nulls and my table. And I can actually load up a background image. So I go to my camera here and go, let me just uh, collapse transform. Background image, add clip. I'm just gonna load an image. Even though I actually exported the entire sequence, Moto's IO with image sequences is so ungodly slow, it's just not worth loading up the whole sequence. But if I load up one image, and uh, I'm gonna go to wireframe here, you'll see that it matches up, right? So I think we're good, we're matching here. So if I scrub, obviously I'm not scrubbing through the background sequence because that would be scrubbing at a glacial pace. Um, but it, the first frame's fine and I can just sort of assume the rest of the frames are going to be okay. And uh, so let's kill that background image. You don't really need that there anymore. And go back to a solid mode. And then what? Well, if I go to the top view, I'll see that my scene is off kilter. It's only off kilter in this uh, axis here, the Y axis. If I look at the right hand side and I look at my three home nulls, they're basically on zero. They're on, you know, Y is 0 0.00114 nanometers or whatever it is. So they're basically on zero, so that's great. But two things are kind of bugging me. One, the table is sort of, you know, it's crooked, so to speak. I like things lined up nicely. To straighten everything out here and get everything into a more reasonable scale, I'm going to add a locator. I'm just going to press L here. I'm going to drag this one to the top. Call it uh, master, because that's what we always call these things, right? And actually, let's let me go to wireframe. Let's uh, use Ateria Quick Locators to give it a better shape. How about a square on the Y? We'll make it purple. The one thing I've noticed about Quick Locators is there's one little bug with Moto 10.2. I don't know why, but I can't get rid of the solidness of it. I actually have to click on it over here, so maybe we can get a bug fix on that. I'm gonna make that just a little bit bigger. If you don't have Quick Locators, get Quick Locators. If you wanna know about Quick Locators, go to the uh, Greg's favorite Moto kits and scripts videos, and there's one on the Quick Locators. Okay, so I've got the Quick Locator in there, the Master Locator, and then I'm going to parent these to the Master, but I'm not just gonna drag and drop. I'm gonna control drag and drop, and the reason I'm doing that is because the camera, which I'm also going to, by the way, parent, 
is animated. So you cannot do a parent in place, which is Moto's default drag and drop parent mode with an animated item. Because if you're going to parent something in place, it has to offset it. And this already has uh, keys in all the channels. So we don't want to offset any of these. So we want to just um, shift click these, hold control, drag and drop. Nothing moved because this locator was at zero, zero, zero. So we're fine and we don't get the error that you're trying to parent in place an animated item. So make sure you control drag and drop to parent those. So now those are there. I'm just gonna do the old rotate. Where's my camera? There it is. I'm just gonna rotate these until I'm mentally agreeable with this scene like this. See, nice and straight. I'm mentally agreeable. But it's also still big, right? So again, I can click this and press, uh, if you don't have Zen, uh, Zen is great. It's uh, Adam O'Hearn Zen layout. Um, I don't usually go to the Zen layout. In fact, I love, I absolutely adore the Zen shortcut keys. So if I'm in my setup mode here, and Zen layout's fine too, but I have giant monitors at work, so I typically don't use it. I don't mind these side uh, panels here. But I love the V key and the G key, and the V key has a little measure thing there. So I can hit measure, and I can hit show dimensions, and this thing is huge, right? 18 meters by 33 meters, way too big. So I need to scale down that stuff to a more reasonable size. So select my master null, hit uh, R, scale this down. Let me see, push in a little bit here. So I think, uh, you know, that table was about a meter deep. So that's about one of those little squares is a meter, maybe something like that, yeah. So there's my dimensions again, that's about 1.5. Maybe I can make it a little bit smaller. Do, do, do. 1.3, a little bit more maybe. Do, do, do. Yeah, 1.1, that's pretty good. That's pretty close to real life. So I'm gonna control click split this and go control space, look through the camera here. And everything's still tracked fine. It's all looking good. It's just scaled down to a more uh, real world size here, which is good. Okay, so let's add a pencil to this, do some dynamics, set up some render layers and get this back over to After Effects. All right, first things first, we need a pencil. So a good thing we have one that comes with Moto. So <laughs> press F6 to bring up the uh, asset browser and meshes, um, interior, household items. No, tabletop, that's what we want. Interior, tabletop, there is a sweet pencil. So double click that guy and it'll bring it in on the origin there. And now let's take a look at this. And remember that these, this is our keyboard. So that's a pretty big ass pencil there. And um, it needs to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to actually scale the polygons. Not in item mode, because I'm gonna be doing some physical simulations on this. And typically physics likes things in item mode to be 100% scale or not actually scaled as, as a transform. It may not make a big difference, but maybe it's just a habit of mine. But I like to scale this stuff in in uh, polygon mode, so press three and then scale it and then we'll just sort of shrink down our pencil a little bit. And if you remember, these nulls here are the width of that notepad. So if I actually go back to After Effects, remember these nulls are the width of that notepad there. So the pencil's maybe just a little bit bigger than that back in Moto. So I'm gonna make it just a little bigger than that. I think that's probably just fine. And then go back to item mode and then I'm going to Control space, go to the right view and shift A to bring it in to my uh, view here and control one, get rid of that grid. So we have a, um, there's the black of my polygon, right? So I wanna make sure it's above that, not halfway through the ground plane. I wanna actually sitting on the uh, table there. Looks pretty good. I don't really want any inner penetration because we're gonna do some physics uh, simulation on here. Maybe move it forward just a little bit. Okay, so control two, make that default mode. And uh, let's go back to perspective over here. Maybe do a uh, default mode two. And so let's do some physics on this guy. So I'm gonna select it. And when you do physics simulations, we wanna make sure that the center is in the center of the um, item. So it looks like it is, but just to make sure, I'm going to go under center to bounding box, center. And if you don't know what a center is, see it moved just a little bit. So it wasn't quite in the center. The center, you could call it the sort of, um, in most uh, 3D programs, you just call it the pivot. In Moto, you've got a center and a pivot. And, and the pivot is actually, can be, you know, it, it travels with the center, but you can offset it. So you can have um, a pivot and a center as two different things. I'm not actually gonna get into that right now. If I go to the pivot, I can select the pivot 
and I can move it away from the center. So there's my pivot, here's my center, but we'll just keep them both where they are. That's probably a discussion for another um, video. So right now we're just gonna center the center, make sure it's centered. Select our uh, pencil again there, pencil is selected, and we'll make it an active rigid body. Select our table polygon here, and whoops, yeah, our table, select our table. Can we select our, oh, here I'm in pivot mode. Let's go to item mode. Select my table and make that a passive rigid body or a static rigid body. And Maya parlance, that's a passive rigid body, I think. Moto, it's a static rigid body. So, okay, we've got static rigid body, active rigid body. And then over here, let's go back to our pencil and let's change some of these parameters. We don't want it really bouncy. Maybe turn that down to five. Friction, that's fine. Um, what I want to do is about you know, maybe 75 frames in, I want it to start rolling and then it's just gonna roll off the table, okay? So if I don't want it to do anything until 75 frames, I want to set the wake on, not at start, but at frame. We'll set that to 75, boom. So now it's the dynamics for this pencil are gonna come awake at frame 75 and then I'm just gonna set an impulse, right? So I'm just gonna impulse on the positive Z and we'll make that maybe 0.5 Newtons and on wake. So it's gonna wake up at 75 frames and it's gonna start impulsing forward on Z at uh, 50 Newtons, 50 micro Newtons. I don't know what CN is, but 50, uh, 0.5 Newtons, 0.05 Newtons, that's what it is. So let's do a little simulation and find out. So now in Moto, a simulation is not pressing play like it is in Maya. You have these two simulation buttons over here. You can simulate, um, stand here on this frame and simulate, nothing's gonna happen. Now this is useful for testing out particles and some things like that, but we actually wanna play the animation and simulate, which is the second button here, and see what it looks like. So let's play this and simulate. So here we're going, 75 frames and it rolls off. Pretty good, right? I mean, I don't think we need to tweak it really. Um, but if we, now you notice it didn't cache it. So if I drag, it's not doing it. So in order to cache it, I have to press this third button here. That's gonna actually cache the simulation. So click that. We want to go to, we can just go through the whole thing because it goes really fast, hit OK. In fact, it went so fast you couldn't even see it, but right now it's actually cached. So if I drag now, it starts rolling and goes off, right? Go backwards, boom. Looks good, that's it. So we've got a pencil rolling off the table of a tracked camera. Pretty sweet, right? Okay, so in order to render this pencil, we should probably do some render passes. Number one, we want to get the pencil with a bit of a drop shadow, and then we also want the pencil's reflection on the glass table. So, little render pass work. If you're not interested in render pass work, then um, you can kind of stop right now. You can see how we did the camera and the uh, physical simulation. If you were just to render this back out, it would, um, in fact, you would basically just hide this uh, glass plane right here and render out the pencil all on its lonesome and it would uh, comp into the After Effects scene pretty nicely. But we wanna get a drop shadow, we want a little contact shadow on the pencil and we wanna do a, a reflection on the glass table so it's a little more work and I'll do that in this next part here. Okay, here we are in the render tab. Let's set some passes up. And before I do this, I'll have you know that passes in Moto are very powerful. They can, uh, it's basically an alternate state of the scene. So anything in the scene and I mean anything that's animatable, uh, any material, any material property, any lighting property, any uh, shading property like visibilities or shadows, any animation property, any morph property, any mesh operation property can be different in a uh, pass. So you can change anything in Modo in a pass, not just uh, rendering properties, but um, if you don't know what you're doing, you will destroy your scene and you'll never get it back. So pay close attention if you are not familiar with passes in Modo. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is set up everything I need in this scene prior to setting up passes. So I've got in a, a, a panorama of the uh, my office in here that I made after I shot my sweet video of the desk. And so I just did a little panorama, drop that in here as the environment for some HDR and some reflections. And I uh, had selected my table here and made a uh, polygon mask called uh, table. And I dropped a material in there, made it sort of glass-like, zero to fuse, 50 on specular, and 100 on Fresnel, 15 roughness. Because basically with the passes, we want two things. We want just the pencil with a contact shadow. Then we want just the pencil's reflection. Just those two things in the passes. We don't want the table. We don't want the background. Just those things. So we need to be able to do a couple of things in our passes to enable that. We need to add 
shaders to each of these items, the pencil and the table, so we can control visibility and alpha properties. And then we need a group for our light here, so we can do some light linking. And what else? Anything else? Probably something else I'm forgetting, but we'll go with that for now. So over in groups, I'm going to just say new group. This is a, let's make it a standard group here. We'll call this a uh, white. And our white is in the white group, and we will use this. Whoops, I'm going to drag my white in the white group. So now there's the uh, white there. And we'll use this for light linking later on. And then I am going to uh, do some item shaders. So table, right click. And item shaders are pretty cool. We don't have to do this in the shader tree anymore where you move masks above the base shader and add a, a specific shader to that mask. We just create an item shader. So I right click, go to shade, item shader. And you'll see that shader appear and all these shading properties with visibilities and alpha channel types and light linking are available for that item. So any mask uh, associated with this, uh, with this item. So this uh, coloring pencil item, right click, it has a bunch of masks associated with it. So go to shade, create item shader. So all these masks here that came with that sort of preset pencil that we loaded in there um, are going to be, we don't have to create a, a special shader in the shader tree to do all this stuff. You know, in the shader tree we do have the ability, ability to do this. For instance, normally what you would do in older versions of Moto is add a shader here to the table, let's say, and move it above the base shader, and then you would you know do some sort of property on this shader, like visibility to camera or something like that, um, which isn't going to work because we have an item shader on here. But we don't need to do that anymore with our item shaders, right? So back here in the item shader, if you look at my pencil or my table, I can turn off visibility to camera, and that works for that objects. So that's how it, um, a lot of this stuff works in other programs. Moto has the ability to do this via the shader tree on a per um, mask basis. So basically a per polygon group basis. So it's super powerful if you do it in the shader tree, but we don't need, we could just do it on an item basis here with these item shaders in the uh, item list. So we've got those guys in the scene. We'll change some properties in the passes. We've got our uh, white group there. I think that's about it. So let's go over to, now we're in our passes here. All passes within Moto are contained within a pass group. So you got to create a new pass group first. We'll call this pencil passes. Sounds good. And the type is render passes. Okay. And then we'll add a pass to the pass group. We'll do one. We'll just call it pencil reflection. Already there. Pencil, capitalize that R, you slob. Pencil reflection. And scroll down, see that there under passes. Let's do one more pencil normal, pencil underscore normal. Okay, pencil normal. Okay, so there's a couple of ways to deal with passes in Moto. There's auto add. Auto add is very powerful. Like I said, any pass in Moto is essentially a channel from an item with a value, and that value can be different. So it could be a channel like a RGB channels and a material, and those channels can have different values in a different pass, or it could be an animation value. And auto add will essentially, if you're in a pass, so here we're in the pencil normal pass, little eyeball here, pencil normal pass, little heads up display, pencil normal pass, we're in a pass. And if I start changing stuff, start changing values, those channels will be added to this automatically. So that's great if you know what you're doing, Super dangerous if you don't, because you'll space out, you'll move the camera, you'll be in a pass and not realize it, and you just changed your entire animation, camera animation, just in that pass. So it can be uh, very dangerous. So I'm actually gonna turn it off and we'll do this manually. So I'm not going to use auto add, I'm going to manually drag the channels that I know I need changed in these particular passes into the pass themselves, then I'm gonna change the values. So. Sounds a little complicated, but it's actually pretty easy. So I know that in this pencil normal pass right here, pencil normal, pencil normal, pencil normal, that's the pass we're in. I just want to make the alpha channel for the table as a shadow catcher. And then I want the background hidden. I don't want to see this uh, environment in the background. So if, with the environment here, I go to channels and see this visible to camera um, channel here. I'm going to drag that over to channels because I know I want that one. And over here, my table shader, it has a particular alpha property, right? Alpha type um, shadow catcher. I want that over there. So I want my, let me just go ahead and scroll down. Alpha type, where is that? Opacity. So I'm going to drag that over to 
my uh, passes, where to go, alpha type opacity, boom, drag that over there. And then I'm gonna make some changes to these two things here. So my environment visible to camera, I want um, that guy to be off like that, right? And then my shader for the table, I want the alpha type to be shadow catcher. Sounds good. Now you'll notice that this apply button is lit here. So I'm going to click that to apply those changes to this pass. So I'm in this pass, I'm gonna apply those changes to the pass. So now these channel values are written into this pass. So if I go to a different pass, let's say the pencil reflection pass, that's going back to the default scene values. If I go back to the default scene, none, um, you'll see that you know those values are, are at their default state. If I go to the go to my pencil passes group and let's go to my uh, pencil normal pass and then what when I go here, these two channels with their alternate states are going to be written into this pencil normal pass. So you'll see there's still a reflection of the uh, pencil on the table here and that's fine. I don't have to get rid of it because if you look at the alpha channel, we just have this shadow catcher alpha here, right? So I've got this pencil with this, you can barely see it here on the screen probably, but there is a little bit of a shadow alpha there. So that is looking good. So I need to do a, another pass for the reflection. So click the little eyeball here. You'll notice that we're in the pencil reflection pass, pencil reflection pass. So one thing you'll notice is these channels are part of the channel of the pass group. They're not in, um, attached to any individual pass. They're just attached to the pass group. So some of these channels may be different in one of these passes or another, but you can't tell which channel is, is attached to which pass, just that the channels are in the pass group. Um, that It's not a great thing because you can sometimes forget what, which pass these channels are attached to. So we're just going to I uh, just wanted to make you aware of that <laughs> so you understand how passes work. Okay, so let's add the channels that we want for our pencil reflection pass. So with the reflection pass, I know I don't want the pencil visible, so I've got my pencil shader here. And the channel I want is visible to camera. So there it is, visible to camera. So I'll drag that into my channels. Visible visible to camera, shader two. So that's shader two. I could I should probably rename that pencil shader so it's more obvious what that is, but we know what that is there. And I can, I'll just do this one at a time here. So let's, we have this pass here. Let's change the value. The value will be, now we are in the reflection pass here. So let's change the value visible to camera. Hit apply. So that's been written into this pass now. So now we just have the camera, ref, uh, the uh, pencil reflection. I, I want to get rid of that environment there, right? And I want that visible to the camera. So I already have that channel in here. So let's make the change to that uh, channel. So environment, no longer visible to reflection. Okay, and apply that so it's written in the pass. Okay, so now the environment's not there. So it's, or I'm sorry, visible to camera, but it's still visible in the reflection, right? The, the environment is being reflected on the table. I don't want that, I just want the pencil reflection, right? So look at my environment channels. I've got one called visible to reflection rays. I don't want that, I'll drag that into my channels here. My, is that something I'm gonna change? Let me change it. Do not want that visible to reflection rays, just want the pencil reflection. So apply that. And we're pretty much done. We've got the pencil reflecting in there. And I'm going to actually change the shading just a bit. I think that needs to be a little bit rougher. Now, this roughness channel I'm changing is not in the passes here. I did not have auto add on. So this change I'm making is, isn't going to be added to the pass. But if I want to be careful, I can just go over here and get out of my pass group and just go to my base scene here and change my roughness to maybe uh, 30. So I get a little more of a roughness here on my uh, pencil reflection, maybe 25. Looks good. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to take a look at the table shader here. So I want to set my light group here in the base scene. This is not an actual channel that can be changed in a pass. It's one of the few things that cannot be changed in a pass. So I want to uh, make sure that this table shader is linked to this light here. So you do that by linking, putting the light in a group and linking the shader to a light. We're actually going to keep it um, include. So the base scene just acts normally. The light is affecting the table. 
But when we get to our pass group here, our pencil reflection pass, we've got a pencil reflection, you'll notice that, of course, the, the area light is affecting the table here, which we don't want in this pass. So fortunately, if I go to the table shader, this mode here is a channel that can be changed in a pass. So we go to our groups here, we'll go to channels, we'll get light linking mode include. We're gonna drag this channel over here to the, uh, the channels in our pass group. And then I'm going to change it to exclude. So I no longer have that area light affecting that, that table. I'm going to apply, lock that into our pass here. And that's it. So there's a reflection of our pencil. If I go over to my pencil normal group, there's my pencil with, uh, it has a reflection, but don't worry, it's not written into the alpha channel. If I look at the alpha channel, then I've, I've got the little shadow alpha there. So that's looking good. So I'm looking good. And I'm not worried about the alpha channel and the reflection group because I'm just gonna do this in an additive mode in After Effects, right? So now when I render, I just want to do this. I want to go over to Ren, I want to do a couple things. One, let's look at, um, I render item really quickly on properties, output pattern. We want to make sure pass is part of the output pattern. So you can go down here, you could pick some of these presets. This one, pass, left, right, uh, frame. This isn't actually stereo. We don't have any stereo here. I just wish they'd get rid of that. Does anybody use stereo? Probably some people in film, but not a lot of Moto users. So pass and frame, that's what's going to be part of our naming convention. And then under render, we're going to say render render animation and then we're going to pick the uh, pass group here so it's going to render both passes in the pass group frames 1 to 150 and if i hit okay it'll start rendering the pencils in the it'll both render the um the pencil normal pass and the pencil reflection pass and add you know those names to the uh uh, output pattern there so that's all you have to do just make sure your final color output is is set to a folder and it'll it'll put both of those images from each pass in that folder that's it so if i go back to after effects so here we are in after effects if we zoom in on the pencil boom 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 you'll see i've got uh, let me just iso this guy here iso the pencil you see the pencil with a bit of a shadow there that's the uh, shadow catcher alpha pencil normal pass here is the pencil reflection pass and that is just set to additive and everything all together looks like this. And so if you want to throw a little blur on that um, pencil reflection, you can do that if you want to. And that's all there is to it. So yeah, the pass system in Moto, I know it's a little complicated. I should probably do a Pixel Fondue video just on the pass system. Um, but for now, go shoot something, track something, export something, import something, animate something, render something, and then bring that into After Effects and comp something. That's it. Bye-bye. Yum, yum!